Well, we're back uh, then uh, with the historic touring car challenge and the cars uh, setting out now on their exploration lap. And uh, I can give you the start drivers on pole position. Car put there by none other than Freddie Hunt, the one, two, three distance skyline of Rick Wood. And it's Rick Wood who starts it. Uh, alongside at 22, Paul Mensley had a massive spin this morning past the pits by the wing in his uh, Murray Cardle lookalike uh, Sierra Cosworth. Second row 155 is uh, Andy Middlehurst now on his own in the Nissan Skyline. Uh, sadly, uh, Jonathan Bailey's had to return home due to a family illness. Uh, then with seven is Gary Pearson in the Ford Capri. Then it's got we've got Richard Kent in the 88 Capri, Simon Garrett in the 37, the Nissan Skyline. Um, then we have Darren Fielding in number eight. He starts the BMW. Steve Dance alongside. He had a big spin down the hangar straight this morning. Mark Smith starts 19. Son Aaron Moulton Smith takes over. Uh, then it's uh, Tristan Judge in the 221 BMW. Ben Gill in the Escort, the ex-Jolly Club Escort. Uh, and then it's Tim Clark who starts the Rover Vitesse, the ex Hepolite Steve Soper car. Uh, Robert Oldershaw in 52, uh, and it's Guy Smith who starts the family Capri. Uh, then we've got Charlie Williams who starts the family Rover, number 13, the ex Dennis Leach car, uh, and Joe Gom in 57. Be a few more uh, on the grid because we've got the. Uh, yeah, we've got now um, Graham Bryant is double driving with Ollie. Graham Bryant, dad, starts. George Potchell starts the 41 Ford Capri. Jim Morris, the Goodwood winning uh, golf. Ex uh, John Morris uh, car, his father's uh, 1981 uh, British Touring Car Championship race winner. Uh, and then it is Jeff Gordon with the number 34 uh, Alfa Romeo. Uh, then we've got uh, White in the um, 75. Uh, we jump down into the UTTCs and um, we know it's 111 is John Clark, 144 David Dickinson, 341 is Sean Balf, 3 Richard Dutton, 2 Neil Brown and 68 Michael Cullen. They're about to go and Ian, back to you for the start. Thanks Marcus, yes, so here we go then, the uh, front row getting away pretty level, the Nissan on pole position and the Sierra alongside as they turn through for the first time the first corner Abbey the whole field there that's gorgeous BMW CSL so in the, in the lead it's uh, Rick Wood in the car that started from pole position put there as Marcus would have said by uh, Freddie Hunt Paul Mensley in the Sierra the U2TC car's getting away and a, a spinning rover there it's uh, the number four car uh, of Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams to begin with, yeah. So in the lead, it's Paul Mensley. Second is Rick Wood. And in third, is that that's Simon Garrett, isn't it? I think who's come through to third. There's the U2CC contingent with uh, David Dickinson in the green and yellow car in the lead at the moment. There's the golf with Jim, uh, Jim Morris starting in the car, isn't it? Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's Paul Mensley who leads in actual yeah. fact in this uh, Netcom car, running in the colours of uh, Murray Carter, whose name is uh, listed on the uh, windscreen. Then we've got the two Nissan Skylines, four-wheel drive turbo cars, immense power, Garrett in the red and black car, going up the right-hand side of uh, Rick Wood in the blue uh, Calsonic tribute car, both of these new builds. And look at the camber they run on the wheels, the front wheels of those uh, Skylines. Yes. And uh, you'll see a bright green one coming through as well. And that's an original Japanese touring car uh, entry. Andy Middlehurst in that one. But, uh, yes, these uh, cars could come into their own uh, early in the race as they go after Paul Mensley, who had that massive spin past the pits this morning. That's um, right, yeah. Then we've got the uh, Cologne Capris, Broadsky Capris in behind. Three of them together, fantastic. Great sight, that, isn't yeah. it? That's really and superb. Steve Dance dropped his on the, in, in standing water on the hangar straight this morning. Oh, God. That was quite exciting. I think so for him, yes. So uh, those uh, Capris, it does recall the European touring car races here in the early 1970s. Yeah, Jochen Maas and Jochen Maas and Co. That's right, absolutely, yeah. Whoops. 
the a bit of bouncy suspension there sends him running very wide he gets back on the tarmac so uh, that's the number 37 car of Simon Garrard who started a bit further back than we might have expected actually on the third row but not that far back of course Paul Mensley leads then Simon Garrard is in second place as the cars come through Yeah, Wood uh, is in third. Then we've got these three superb Capris with uh, Gary, Pearson Gary Pearson in seven, leaving, leading uh, Steve Dance. And diving down on the inside there to gain a place, perhaps, number 88, which is uh, That's Richard, Richard Kent. Kent at the moment, isn't it, in that car? Yeah, he, Richard Kent. He did a bit of Formula Renault. And, yes. Um, he did Palmer Audi as well, as you say, but it yeah. also did Star Mazda in the States. Tested oh, right. some Indy Lights, he was telling me this morning. Yeah. But I was right about the Palmer Audi, wasn't I? Yes, yeah. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. All right, so the car said the lead is turning through uh, Brooklands. It's still the Sierra in front. It's an hour long, this race, so uh, it's, it's a pretty hectic beginning. Uh, uh, and uh, mandatory pit stop, of course. Marcus has probably explained about the mandatory pit no, stop. No, I haven't. No, oh, right, we'll, we'll catch up on we that will. in a moment. 20 to 40, isn't it? The, uh, the pit, pit window. stop window, uh, that's normally what it is. Uh, with the twenty to forty, sixty seconds yeah, um, mandatory are. stop. A beautiful BMW. Uh, CSL it is, isn't it? Yes. Again, that that recalls the Taurus Trophy of the European Touring Car Championship in the nineteen eighties. Great looking cars, and uh, the Hepolite. That's a Steve Sofa livery, isn't it? In that rover. Oh, car. and uh, spinning that's, around that's there, Ben Gill. Ben Gill didn't lose that much time. In a, in a Pinotto for Chetty uh, team uh, escort, escort. Orig original car. And the yes, the um, the Hepolite, uh, rover there, Tim Clark, uh, is owned by Ken Clark, who was one of the engineers on the uh, Walkingshaw team when Steve Soper raced this car. Yeah. Original car. Steve put it on. Graduating from the Metro Turbo, Steve put that car in pole position for the opening round of the championship. Uh, the year, though, that uh, they was robbed, or Steve reckons he was robbed, and uh, the championship went to an Alfa Romeo, Andy Rouse instead. So here comes the Rover and the BMW. That does recall, that, that really does re recall the early 80s, doesn't it? It does, just beautiful. Those um, old cars, very, very good. And then we've got Simon Garrard tucked in now behind Paul Mensley. Simon Garrard with the benefit of four-wheel drive uh, in the, uh, the Nissan. But Paul Mensley going great guns, isn't he? Really, really good. Yeah, he can be quite feisty, can Paul Mensley. And oh, one of the Capri's gone. The, that's the, the Vince Woodman, Woodman look-alike, yeah. isn't it? The SO car, is that Pochol? Um, is it uh, George Pochol? Yes, it is, number 41. Uh, one of the Capri's is in. And I uh, can't see the number as to whether it's Pearson or, uh, or no, another one. Ripping some um, tape from the uh, oil coolers. Saying, there's the green, that's the original, um, the Jonathan Bailey car, which is driven by Andy Middlehurst solo now. And Charlie Williams tucked in behind in that very lurid looking ex Dennis Leach um, rover, Vitesse. Yeah, Owen uh, Middlehurst down in 14th place, which is a bit further down for him, isn't it? Anyway, there he is. And being tackled on the inside by the number four rover, the Charlie Williams car. In the Dennis Leach kind of livery, that isn't it? It's Dennis Leach's car, the old Dennis oh. Leach car. Dennis Leach, sometime privateer British Formula One driver, as well as <laughs> Formula 5000 race. I saw him change a wheel in his 5000 Chevron at Thruxton. Came in, climbed out of the car, changed the wheel, uh, got back into the car, strapped himself in and continued. One of the, I think he should be more of a legend than he is, is known to be. But absolutely. He, a great character, Dennis Leach, absolutely. Anyway, nose to tail the two leaders then. The Sierra Cosmos still just ahead of the, of the Nissan as they come uh, onto the straight. Uh, and equal in power, aren't they? There's little to choose between the two of them. Yeah, I think the, the Sierra's made about 560 horsepower uh, in, uh, in period, but for not for very long. Uh, they tended to uh, have to wind the turbo boost back uh, for the races and the, uh, and the skyline twitching away. He comes in a slightly different line into club because he's got all that extra grip with all four wheels driven. He dives down the inside and he takes the lead. And the opportune moment for uh, uh, Simon Garrett side but by side. Both of them come off the corner and the turbo 
uh, Sierra coming back at Simon Garrett. Is he close enough to get Whoa. that post back? It was very, very close very turning close in that, wasn't to it? Abby, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, but uh, well driven both guys there. Now that Simon Garrett has the lead, I kind of suspect he's going to be able to pull no, away. Oh no, he's got not. No? Uh, he's going to have um, his work cut out for a, a little bit because um, look at Mensley. He's uh, not giving up by any means. Not by any means. So through the loop and onto Wellington straight through entry. And this great shot of them coming over the brow. Who says Silverstone's flat? Uh, here they come. And it is the just the Nissan in front. So it's just Simon Garrod from Paul Mensley. These drivers both uh, going solo all the way through. They have to make the pit stop, of course. And uh, inside line taken through Brooklyn. That's not really going to work because Simon Garrod can defend the inside line all the way through Luffield. Uh, and uh, Paul Mensley tightens his line, tries to get level. Is he going to be able to do so before he gets to Cops Corner? Yeah, he could do. He's, he's going to block um, his rival's route to the apex. Yes, isn't he? he is. That's right. So the but the, the Nissan gets ahead. He's got a bit more grunt and, and more grip. Paul Mensley looks for the inside line again as they go into Doesn't Cops. Doesn't quite so well in Formula One, does it? That <laughs> right. They both stayed on the tarmac. And, and the Sierra goes back in front as they come into the Beckett's S's. A great move, that, because it's a, a daunting sequence of corners, that. But the Sierra's got through, but the Nissan is fighting back uh, as they go through the last part of the Beckett's S's through Chapel Curve and onto Hangar Straight. It's the Nissan just ahead. Got a shot there of the uh, number 12 Escort having a little bit of a moment, was it? Anyway, it's uh, putting in the right direction now. <laughs> side by side as they come down into Stowe Corner. The Nissan's got the inside line, but I think Paul Menz is just far enough ahead to hang on to the lead he has. So it's back in front, the Sierra. Simon Garrett fighting. This is an absolutely superb race, this, isn't it? They've got some uh, of the use. You, Two TC cars to be lapped here, BMW de Cortina. That's uh, John Clark in the uh, BM. And the number two, Lotus Cortina, is Neil Brown's car, which went well, finished third in the Jack Door handle, race, door handle stuff, wasn't it? Uh, uh, real door handle stuff, yes. Right, so Paul Menz is not going to mess about. He's got the lead back and he's trying to prise open the gap, but he's going to come across the back markers, which may slightly delay him. That's the uh, Lotus Cortina, Michael Cullen there, just lapping through the loop. And Aintree onto Wellington Strait. There's the Chevrolet Camaro of Ollie Bryant, number 21, which is uh, running in 20th place. Uh, Graham right at the moment, sorry, yeah. So down into Brooklands, it's Paul Mensley leading by nothing at all, really, from... Simon Garrod in the Nissan through Luffield. Ah, oh, back with a 1980s, 1983 TT battle, this. It was a race in which Jonathan Palmer drove on the BMW, mm. both of the BMWs uh, and uh, 635s. Finished second in one of them with James Weaver in one of the, a car like that. A car that someone like Peter Buckstorff ended up with, didn't he? Possibly, yes, yeah. yes. Ex Honda Civic racer. Right, so the BMWs have paired up. And here they come the BMW and the Rover side by side. Charlie Williams in the Rover. And in the BMW. Very valuable car, that I would have thought these days, but uh, going very nicely in the hands of Tristan Judge. Si opposite lock there. Here we've got uh, Michael Cullen locking horns with the number 34 Cortina of Sean Balf. Of Sean Balf. 88. It's 341, um, actually. No. 88 Richard Kens, instead. That was in with overheating, which is why they ripped the tape off the uh, ah, okay. uh, oil coolers and rad. Yeah, where's Gary Pitts? Gary Pitts is currently running in fifth place behind Steve Dance. That's a good battle, isn't it, that's going on here? Sean Balf and, and uh, Michael Cullen. I think the screen might have actually locked as we're, um, we're further on than, uh, than yeah, we in are. four laps now. 
Side by side round Stowe, the two Cortinas. Michael Cullen, the Irishman, on the inside. Sean Balfe, uh, XGT man, weathers it on the outside. Cullen now has to play catch up again. Another of uh, Valley's mighty uh, GA powered Capris in behind that scope piss. Oh, a spin oh. for Simon Garrard in the uh, in the four-wheel drive this he did his six-wheel drive there but he's only got four and uh, he dropped that that was most unusual that was at far no was that was at uh, far, entry far, I think it was not far, 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 far think, yeah. well that leaves Paul Mensley on his own for the moment we didn't quite catch the beginning of that but uh, I think Jeff Bloxham did it looked like him on the side of the track with his telephoto lens <laughs> trained OK, well, he's brought he's the two Nissans together. Yes, so in third place is Freddie, is uh, Rick Wood, I should say, uh, in the car that uh, Freddie Hunt put on pole position. So, as you say, the two Nissans together. David Dickinson just behind in his Lotus Cortina, which has been well used this weekend. This is its third race, I think, or certainly its second race. Uh, he's running in first place in the U2TC category, number 144, in 19th place overall. Of course, starting 20 seconds late anyway. So here we go with... Uh, Simon Gow's not having exactly a quiet race, is he? I'm sure he loves every minute of this, every moment, because uh, he's now running wide again, and another spin, and into the gravel or not. He's got four-wheel drive. Come on, you can get the four-wheel drive working. But only the rear wheels are driving at the moment. Yeah. Because they're the ones no, that he's got bogged the grip, down. they haven't. He's, he's um, try reverse, try rocking it. No, so I'm afraid Simon Garrett's moments of glory have gone. And he's now in the gravel at Cops Corner. So Paul Mensley, who led over the line, incidentally, by 2.2 seconds at the end of the previous lap. And it's far, far too early to say he's got the race in his pocket. Uh, yeah, well, an Elva Mark V in the previous gravel race in, in the gravel is easy, but this is a bit heavy car. A jury of marshals isn't going to sort this, is it? They're trying no. really hard, but... No. It's an unequal struggle. I'd go the other... No, it's easy to sit here and say, but I don't think they're going to get it out, no. Does that mean safety car? Uh, it could well, couldn't it? Yeah. And Mensley completes his sixth lap for Mensley. What he doesn't want now is to have his, uh, his advantage wiped out. And uh, we're not... We're, we're still five minutes from the pit window opening. Yeah. So up to second, of course, has come the Rick Wood car, number 123. Up to third will come Steve Dance. Up to fourth will come Gary Pearson in their Capris. And up to fifth will come, it was Mark Smith who started in number 19. Yep. Yeah. Patrick Motor Group, a rover, goes through our shot. And here comes our leader. Is he starting to look for um, some of the damper parts of the circuit, or is it just uh, <laughs> where the cosy took him? Paul Mensley certainly can't afford to uh, to slow down any. This is car that's presented in this Murray Carter Netcom tribute livery, and uh, we've got uh, we've got a caution by the looks of things. Yeah, safety car. Safety car has been deployed. Still four minutes though before the pit window opens. But I think we'll find it'll this safety car period will spill over into the safety car. It will. It's bound to. Because the cars are quite well spread out. The marshals can't really get to that uh, strandedness. And they've got a, a, a strop on it from the JCB. It'll go... Well, it's out of the actual gravel area. That's just, and they're going to send it its way. And into the pits has come uh, the Clark... The Clark Rover. Yeah. And it's fuel tap. Oh, well done, well done fuel Marshall. Flap open. They've just got it onto the hard standing, and they're just going to. Um, off goes uh, Simon Garrard back to the pits, I would think. So that the yellows can be retrieved. Snatch vehicle not needed. No, it looks like this should be all right. Well, the snatch vehicle got it out of the gravel, I think, and right. um, just uh, is now motoring off behind, behind the fence. So. But has that cost? Safety car actually didn't come out, did it? It was no, just a, 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 no. a caution, a localised caution. Well, it's dropped him, we reckon, a 14th and possibly a little bit further. Yeah, out, he's outside, outside assistance, though. 
Uh, well, I was going to say, assuming he's allowed to continue, yes, it may be that outside assistance will mean the car's going to be excluded. There is the Oliver Bryant Chevrolet Camaro. With Graham driving. With Graham driving, yes, at this stage. Yes, the ex uh, was a Pierluigi Martini, Shell Pierluigi Martini. I think that's a tribute BMW uh, in there. Looks absolutely brilliant in those colours. Mind you, E30 M3s do look fabulous. They do look it's a, it's a great looking car. Yeah. I don't think any of the subsequent ones have looked as good, actually. They've, uh, but the, uh, the, oh, into the pits, therefore, comes, as you predicted, Marcus. Well, he said they had two Simon spins Garrett. in a lap, so something's awry. Yeah. He didn't yes. seem to have much drive from the front wheels when he was in the gravel, but that's uh, probably the, the, the torque split trying to get him out. So Paul Mensley leading by nearly 10 seconds now, nine and a half seconds. It was a two-second lead he had before the Nissan spun. And the Rover was in at about 44 minutes, 43 and a half minutes, wasn't it? So it's before the window is officially open. They're still working on yeah, the Tim the Clark, Ken Clark car, changing those front wheels. Yeah, the window's not open yet, but it will be in a minute and a half. That's Richard Dutton pressing on in his Lotus course. He's running second in the U2TC to David Dickinson. The, the bingled side on the number three Cortina, incidentally, the left-hand side yes. was uh, courtesy of a first lap um, uh, tag with Mike Gardner yesterday. Oh, right. Yes, well, as I said, Richard picked up dents on his escort at the Silverstone Classic uh, in a similar sort of way. So we're almost, uh, just under a minute before the pit stops can begin. Change of order from the BMWs. Uh, Darren Fielding in the car that he's going to hand over to David Cuff, who we saw in the GT40 race yesterday. Uh, that car is now up into fifth place ahead of Mark Smith, um, whose son Aaron uh, will drive it. Aaron Moulton Smith, who runs the Amspeed BMW preparation company nearby Brackley. Well, for the moment, things are quieting down a little. Which is to say they're not going to become more exciting as we get the second drivers into the car after the pit stop have all taken place. So, Rick Wood threw in second place. Has Freddie Hunt driven this car before? Before uh, today, what's the Silverstone Classic? He drove one of the Rick Wood right. um, cars, didn't he? Because Rick has a habit of calling upon quite a variety of well known drivers to share the car with him. Adam Morgan, in particular, has driven that car several times. Jim Morris moves up into 15th place with the, uh, the Black Golf, the Triang Morris Vulcan car that uh, Father John raced in period, won a Mallory Park round, of the split split grid round of the British Sling Car Championship back then, 40 years ago, won at Goodwood recently. Car later driven by um, Alan Minshaw. Confirmation that the pit window is now open. And there is the Morris Vulcan flyer, the flyer skates car, trying toys. Lister's as the VW dealer also supported that. And with Jeff Lister was a, uh, a good racer. It's a well-sponsored car, that, for yeah. its days, isn't it? Yeah. Jeff Lister ended up being doing yeah. principal sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Th this BM ba BMW battle is continuing. It's been going on for quite a while, hasn't it? Mark Smith in the number 19 car. Uh, and number eight, Darren Fielding. Both of whom have alternative drivers to hand over to yep and so down into there's the Alpha Sud Sprint of Jeff Gordon or to give it his full title Alpha Romeo Alpha Sud Sprint Veloce Group 2 I think that's the longest entry so the quality is, oh here we are with, back with the BMWs then with uh, number 19 Mark Smith the Williams Rover back in the race, I assume with Chris now driving the car. It makes sense, even though they came in outside the pit window, they left it Oliver, within the Oliver window. Oliver Bryant's alert, because Graham's out of the uh, Chevy Camaro. 
in the Simon Eyes Richard Lloyd colours. That's 57's Joe Gom with his immaculate Mark 1 it is, isn't it? Escort. Very smart car. There you are, I've got the two generations of competition Ford saloons, Lotus Cortina and Escort. Part one behind the other. Uh, still Paul Mensley reels off the laps. He's now on his 10th lap. And has got a fastest lap at 2 minutes 23.4, but now lapping three seconds slower than that. I'm intrigued to see when Rick Wood will hand over to Freddie Hunt. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally run, they run about halfway. Now, do you think there's going to be any drive, uh, any tyre changing onto slick tyres? With only a with only a 60, they've got a 60 know. second slot. They're yeah. going to lose time, aren't they? That's what happened with the Clark. Um, I think they put uh, different tyres on the front of that. Well, they're going to lose time, but they could gain that time back if, if the track yep. continues to dry out as it is at the moment. Sean Balf seems to have been winning his battle against Michael Cullen. They're about to be lapped by the leader, Paul Menz, who does seem to be looking for the damp parts of the track now. He has been for a few laps yeah. now, and in fact, quite a lot of the chasers, probably two-thirds of the top 20, set their best uh, laps last time round. Well, that's fine, so long as the tyres last. It probably won't be another half hour if it continues to drive, drive. so they will be in the same boat. Yes. Better on a lighter car, less powerful car, I guess. Yes, he's, um, he's certainly Straight looking onto for the, the, uh, the, yeah. the really damp uh, bits. But he's got, what, nine seconds advantage? Yep. Over the wooden hunt car. It's come down uh, just a little, but uh, it was always between nine and ten seconds. Pitts for the leader. And at ten laps, in comes Paul Mensley. What's he going to do with that uh, netcom? They're centre-lock wheels, car. aren't they? So yeah. it's not a lot of nuts to undo if he is going to change tyres. Depends how many people you've got lurking in the pits to, well, uh, to change indeed. them, I, I guess. Pit open, yes. Pit, I saw the pits open sign. So let's get back. Here we are to the... Sierra, the leader, comes to a halt. The we hear the waiting there. question shouted, are we going to change the tyres? They'd have started by now if they were going to. There's no refuelling involved. Bottle of water goes in. Comes out. The hand temperature gauge on the tyre. Yes. <laughs> There's Neil Brown's Lotus Cortina just coming in. So they're obviously happy that uh, the tyres will last or don't want to risk losing time by changing them. The slicks were piled up at the side, as you can see that they're yeah. just there. So, uh, those they are mustn't, hit, uh, what they yeah. mustn't do is spoil this by leaving a couple of seconds early. Better to leave it two seconds late yeah, yeah exactly if you get to uh, go out early then you have to come back in serve a stop and go for the amount of time you were short of 60 yeah. seconds stationary well back on his way then is uh, Paul Mensley he has fastest lap of the race to his credit also in the pits is the number 111 BMW 1800 teaser. Uh, John Clark coming in to hand over to Gordy Much. I'm sure he's enjoying his experience of uh, historic racing cars. He drove at Thruxton last year um, right. with, um, with John, John. And then yeah. the engine blew on, the, uh, uh, on a Jaguar E-type. Ben yeah. Gill in. With the RS 1600 Escort. And David Dickinson in the Lotus Cortina, which leads U2TC. Yes, he was in 17th place. Freddie Hunt, ready to go. When the car arrives. Has Freddie, he must be thinking, has he got the pace to uh, catch 
Well, he had the pace. Uh, the 88 Capri is back in. So this is Chris Ward waiting to get into uh, the car. Take over from Richard Kent. Yeah, it's running in ninth place now. And there's the uh, the blueness and then Rick Wood in door already open. Freddie Hunt with the uh, with his father's Wellington School stripes around the uh, crash helmet. All right. The Rick Wood padding is removed to accommodate Freddie. There's Rick rushing around, putting his gloves off uh, and telling Freddie, or perhaps just helping him strap himself in. The great thing about the Silverstone pit lane, because it's Grand Prix Formula One standards, it's big and wide and open. You can see the cars in the pit lane uh, and get a great view of their relative positions. Hoshino and Suzuki, the uh, drivers of that car. Well, not that one, but that one yeah, in the, the one in that livery. Yes. So out goes Fearless Freddy. Steve Dance hasn't yet pitted, has he? No. So he will have the lead, I think. Presumably when he comes in next time. The 88 Capri is out now with uh, Chris Ward. And Chris Ward is just ahead on track of Freddie Hunt. And that 88 Capri came in, coming after the, I think it did. Uh, yes, it did. And Robert Oldershaw, the onion farmer, <laughs> with his uh, Patrick Motorsport Rover. Done a lot of sports car racing in the past. A uh, bit of historic sports car racing, but prior to that, more sports modern stuff. 2000. Yeah. So the, uh, not all the cars, no, there's quite a few that haven't yet made their pit stop. Pretty Hunt's getting going, going around the outside of uh, Ollie Bryant, in one of the Tony Dron cars. And this, uh, that BMW M3 tussle has been going really well. Mark Smith in the Pierluigi Martini Monticello car. Uh, is um, just ahead at the moment of uh, Darren Fielding in the car that David Cuff, the uh, ex-Formula Vauxhall Junior ace, runner-up to Dario Franchitti when he won the, the championship. We'll see Dario racing later on in the day. Um, David Cuff will take over that car from Darren Fielding. Uh, then it's Tristan Dr Judge in seventh in the BMW 635 CSI. Number 221. The order is shaking itself out now. Here comes the Cullen uh, 68. Yeah. So, yet to stop Steve Dance and Gary Pearson. Interesting colour, that, isn't it? It's sort of something you'd measure on a Ford. Michael Collins colour. Yeah, uh, like Ford Console Classic would have come in that colour. Bit too pastel for my liking. The junket, I think, yeah. is yeah. the term. <laughs> there was junket. Just, I remember Junket. Essence of Ren Renit. I'm not sure it ever came in that colour. You think it did? Right, OK. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> right, so there's the... Currently, the leading car is Steve Dance in the number 16. That's the 88 Capri. Chris Ward at the wheel in 11th place currently, but obviously he's going to move up a little bit, not just because Chris Ward is driving it. Yeah, mentally, so? mentally second, but he's, what, about 38 seconds behind, something like that? 38.2, yeah. So the pit stop will put uh, Steve Men uh, Paul Mensley back in the lead. But there's certainly a dry line appearing now, isn't there? Yes, very much so. Chris Ward enjoying this car, had his win yesterday with Richard Kent. The Morris uh, Vulcan the Flyer coming in. It's been in already, hasn't it? Uh, talking about it, weren't Where we? is Morris? 14th. Yeah. Is this first or second stop? It says first there. I thought okay. it'd been in, but anyway, it shows its first stop. It's so we can have here from Rick Wood. Over to Lewis. 
OK, here we are down the pit line at the moment and uh, with Rick Wood. Rick just jumped out of the Nissan, the, the one, two, three car. Oh, yeah, really? Skyline. Um, yeah, fantastic. I was just um, taking it easy, swerving all over, trying to get some uh, water on my tyres. I'll let everyone go, thinking, right, well, as long as I can see them, I didn't want to uh, push like they did and ruin my tyres because I want to hand it over at half point to uh, Mr Hunt uh, in good condition. So hopefully that's what I've done. Well, yeah, well, Freddie, has Freddie driven the car before? He has driven it in the wet before. Um, yeah, he's... Um, I would say he's more like his dad than his dad. He seems to have no mechanical sympathy, <laughs> but the guy is just full of talent. So, you know, uh, wow. Yeah, doesn't he look like his dad as well? He sounds like his dad, he looks like his dad, uh, and great credit, you know, he's doing a really good job. So, uh, how much horsepower are you... Yeah, we'll give that a miss. I have to say that again. How much horsepower is the car putting out? Um, it's putting out 700 horsepower. So, uh, but we're, we're, res we're restricted to uh, 1.2 bar boost, or well, that's what I've promised the organisers. If I wind it up like we did at Speed Week, you wouldn't see us. I tell you what, that's that's more. Freddie's got more horsepower than Dad did in period. Yeah, but it's a heavy car, 1,500 kilos, so it's not everything. But um, yeah, it's a lot of car to stop and a lot of car to go. Okay, thanks very much, mate. We uh, hope to see you on the podium. You never know. Hopefully. Thank okay. you. Back to you in the uh, studio. Thanks, Lewis. That's that's a wonderful comment. He's got no mechanical sympathy. <laughs> What do you think of that? But, but, but full of talent. <laughs> but so full of talent. That's, that's the quote of the year, I reckon. <laughs> Just like his dad. <laughs> uh, well done, Rick Wood. Uh, Steve it, it, Dance has been in yeah. and is on his way out. Uh, is that Gary Pearson in? Uh, no, it's 88, 88, 88 again. again. Oh, dear. That car's future doesn't look very bright. That's the Chris Ward, Richard, ex Richard Kent car, bonnet coming off. So Steve Dart, as you say, has been in. Paul Menzies, therefore, will take back the lead. But tyres are clear. There he is using the wet part of the straight. Somebody's spinning we can hear. Oh, oh it's, it's Ben Gill again. Ben Gill again, yes. Car, yeah. yeah. That uh, cop's corner. That's the third spin that we know of. Indeed, yes. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, I think amongst all these spins, he's, he's running 10th, yeah, yeah uh, leading his class. So uh, it's uh, just a bit of fun for him. Now, Andy Middlehurst has just had his best lap in the Nissan number 55. Now, can he progress further? It's quite a lot of power, that 700. I'm not, he's not delivering it at the moment, that car, but... Uh, Rick Woods. He it doesn't have to use it all, but it's handy when it gets a bit drier. <laughs> yes. If you're not trying to conserve your tyres. Well, Paul Mensley is driving an immaculate race, isn't he? He is, and, and Paul's usually fairly meteoric. He's um, he, he can fall off a bit, as he did at Spa, and right. um, he certainly is, uh, is, is rapid. And well, uh, it's good that he's actually got himself out front with yeah. um, a sensible lead. Well, there's 24 and a half minutes just under to, still to go, and the track to me is just looking drier and drier on the line. So. You're going to make one of your clever analogies in a minute with 24 seconds and 24 minutes <laughs> or something like that to go. So I'm not sure what quite the lead is over. Uh, um, it'll be. It well, we'll next, I think, right? Well, it, it, there's Rick. Well, there's Freddie Hunt going through. He's 16.3 seconds behind. So, Paul Mensley leads. Now, is Freddie, if he's got no mechanical sympathy, can he look after tyres? <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out. Because uh, he's got to keep his wets in working order for another 25, nearly 25 minutes, 23 and three quarters. Uh, and the gap is 16.3 seconds. And it's Cuff now in the fourth place car, isn't it? David Cuff in the, uh, the works livery uh, BM. Yeah. Andy Middlehurst is the one of the few yet to have stopped, and all, he's in seventh place. In eighth place is the Williams Rover, and that's yet to make it stop either. But they look to be the only two that haven't yet stopped. And there is the Williams Rover. So still Charlie Williams. I, th I thought Williams. that had been in a while. I thought point. it had been in, but the screen is not saying that it has. Let's have another check on that, if I can't read the light. Yeah, there, there's no... But it's in now. OK.
So with a, well, just under three minutes before the window closes. Seven Pearson goes back into the race. Great sound that makes. So running in third place, Gary, when he came in, but he could be caught by David Cuff in the number eight BMW. So Freddie Hunt, last time around, was quicker than Paul Mensley. A second quicker. Do we have a chase on our hands like we had a few yesterday? <laughs> what sort of touring cars did James Hunt race? He raced the Hillman Imp, didn't he? Very early days. It, very early James Hunt days. That was it, when he was a Formula 3 driver. And the Camaro. The Camaro in the Tour of Britain. The, uh, Tour of Britain, yeah. yeah. But yes, you could just see the, the, the track, that shot showing so clearly how the dry line has uh, emerged. Right, so Paul Mensley has now completed 15 laps. And there is Freddie Hunt in the chase mode. Uh, the gap has come down. 15.19 seconds it is now. This is 1.2 taken back. It's tire. It, it's how they can look after their tyres, really, isn't it? It's a tyre situation. So if Paul Mensley has the tyres on the Sierra, and he, he was, as you said, Marcus, he was looking at the, to find the wet patches quite a while before his pit stop, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, probably five or six laps before anyone else uh, started doing that. But when, when you put slicks on, there's such a huge difference in, in car's performance, isn't there, that you'd have thought it's worth, it's yeah, worth I taking guess the it risk. depends. With centre-lock wheels, you should be able to get those uh, wheels changed pretty quickly. But if something goes wrong, yeah. you could be struggling. Here's Middlehurst Andy coming Middlehurst in with in, yeah. the uh, Kiyoseki car, uh, a real Japanese uh, touring car. This one as opposed to a tribute car. Yeah, Andy did his, uh, best lap, his personal best lap last time around. stopped from net fourth place but uh, stayed out did you say yes so where are the capris going to emerge they're a long way back steve dance in third place is 43.3 seconds behind freddie hunt And although the tyres, the slicks were there, that's not going to happen, is it? It's Jersey Road registered, isn't it? With the, uh, I'd go for Guernsey, actually. You could be Guernsey. Guernsey, yes. You have a J in the, in the Jersey ones, but no, no letters in the Guernsey number plates. Toshio Suzuki, Yuda. Right, well, in comes the Williams... No, not the Williams Rover. Clark Rover. Clark Rover, yeah. And the 88 Capri's having a several stop strategy, which yeah. is not uh, <laughs> ideal. It's still shown to be 12th. So he was in a good position. There goes Andy Middlehurst back into the race. Last time around, Paul Mensley a 226.666. Freddie has done a 224.962. The gap's down to 13.49 seconds. Wonder what words of encouragement he got from Rick Wood before he uh, set off in the pits. There's the uh, BMW Gordy Much at the wheel now, number 111. There's Richard Kent in the background. Uh, they've decided that's it. There's no point in continuing with this. Uh, the Alpha Sud Sprint is in, number 34 of Jeff Gordon, running in 18th place, leading its class of probably not very many. And Steve Dance has just done his personal best lap, but uh, three seconds slower than Freddie Hunt. And also speeding up Aaron Moulton Smith in the number 19 BMW. Yes, he's taken that over from Dad Mark. And he is leading. Leading David Cuff by 84B. Uh, and he is leading David by nothing. 
like 0.788 of a second. I've seen Middlehurst back out on track. There's yeah. Freddie Hunt in the Calsonic Tribute skyline behind Tristan Judge's uh, BMW CSI 635. If he has no mechanical sympathy, presumably you need some of that to cope with the tyres situation. You would have thought. Just press on uh, and see what happens, really. Just chasing them down. He was racing revolutions last weekend at um, Donington. Went very well, oh, right. He? Had a couple of very good results yeah. there. Well, there's the leader coming through to complete another lap, lap 17. He's just got to keep it really neat and tidy. And try not to sap yeah, too much... Uh, Momentum uh, out. Head, for, head for the. Uh, there's the green Nissan, that's Middlehurst. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's the blue one of Freddie Hunt. It's about the length of the Hamilton Strait between them. Gap is down to under eight seconds, isn't it? It's a question of uh, when, I suspect. Well, it's a question of when, but will the tyres last? This is the other point. Because they are definitely running now, and I don't know that Freddie is going on the wet bits particularly, unlike Paul Mensley. So, yes, 7.947 seconds is the difference. That's a big reduction in one lap. Paul Mensley did a 2.30. Now, there's no particular reason why his lap time should have gone up so much. Now that gap was used so much, not much, not entirely because Freddie's catching, but also because Paul Menzi had a slow lap. And Freddie did do the car's fastest lap last time around, 224.517. Still the fastest lap belongs to Paul Menzi at 223.445. But as I say, his last lap was a 230, Paul Mensley's. Andy Middlehurst, I would imagine, would be able to keep up with him, but he's a lap down, running in seventh place. There's Freddie Hunt turning into Cops Corner. There's the Sierra through Maggots, now into Beckett's. Andy Middlehurst is between them. Middlehurst got something of a move on, hasn't he? Um, yes. I think subsequent uh, to his pit stop. Yes, he, he's not yet done a flying lap. He's on it at the moment after his pit stop. He's just done the out lap. There's the number 75 Ford Capri of Jonathan White. Got eras of Fords there, an Escort, a Cortina uh, and a Capri. Uh, and mixed up with them is a Rover. Yes, the Escort, the successor to the uh, Cortina, but it's a much beefier car than that. the Group 2, or Group 5, Lotus Cortina. And a new fastest lap to Andy Middlehurst, that's what you were saying, Marcus, and you, Andy, getting a move on, 223.141 is the fastest lap of the race. 5.7 seconds now, isn't it, between yes. first and second? Yes, yes. So I'm sure you're right in saying it's not a question of weather, but it is a question I of think, when. I think Freddie Hunt is able to see how quickly Andy Middlehurst is going up ahead in a similar car mm. and uh, maybe using him as a sort of a, a, a pace car, if you like. That's a good view there of uh, the whole of Club Corner, left element in its right part as well. Now onto the Hamilton Strait. We're waiting for another spin by the escort, Ben Gill. And now a nice view of Abbey and Farm. Who's leading the Tony John Trophy uh, Group 1 section? Is it Robert Aldershaw? Which, which class? TD class. Well, um, Middlehurst has got ahead of Paul Mensley. Yes. Uh, such as his pace. 
I can see in the background the blueness and lights on of Freddie Hunt. Yeah, I mean, Paul Mosley clearly is worried about his tyres. I, I, I don't suppose Freddie is worried about the tyres. He just presses on and hopes they'll stay together. But uh, Andy Middlehurst, as you say, now ahead. But he's unlapped himself. That's not putting him into the lead of the race. And that's Nissan that's Tactics going to come into yeah, play here. It seems to be backing up the uh, Sierra towards the uh, Well, it looked a bit like that. Yep. It certainly looked a bit like that. Into club. It's funny, there are certain parts of the circuit where the camera angle is foreshortened. It looks like yes. Freddie Hunt's closer than he perhaps is. But in terms of time, we're going to find out in a moment, but it's, it was 5.7 seconds at the start of the lap. It's going to be less than that now, I would have thought. 4.7, it's come down at one second. Paul Menzi just lapping the Cortina of David Dickinson, which does lead U2TC in 15th place, number 144. The Tony John class leader is Robert Oldershaw in the Rover in 11th place, number 52. And second is, it was Guy Smith who started in that Capri, number 29, so it's now his father, Peter Smith. Yeah, the more winner, Guy Smith. Indeed, Bentley boy of modern times. Time ticking away, but not quickly. Oh, it's still 11 minutes and 20 seconds <laughs> of the race time remaining. I think uh, Paul Mensley would prefer to see that clock come down a little quicker. Yeah. Well, I'm sure if he had 700 port horse, three course for under his right foot, those tyres would be shredded by now, but uh, he's not using that much. He hasn't had that much available. Dave Cuff has just done that car's best lap. The, uh, he, he's in sixth place, the number eight BMW E30 M3. Freddie Hunt has now lapped at 223.215 on the last time. That's uh, another improvement then for that car but still not quite down well of course we've got the fastest lap by Andy Middlehurst now 221.9 he's got to make up set to gain another place and he's going to have to make up 17 seconds on the BMW number eight but that of course is locked in a battle with Gary Pearson's Capri number seven less than half a second between them last time through that's for fifth place Different yes, classes. Um, Aaron Moulton Smith's got himself ahead of Pearson, hasn't he? So uh, got a buffer back to the other BMW. Yes, uh, David Cuff in the eight car, and Cuff now got ahead hey. of Pearson. Nine and three quarter minutes to go. Leader crosses the line, swerves almost across to the uh, wet part of the circuit on the right-hand side, up the pits, up past ah, the pits. And now Freddie Hunt, to a degree, was following suit there. Um, he watched what Paul Mensley was doing, but he's seen that there is that drier line. Right. And the gap is down to 3.7 seconds. So that was back to a normal sort of lap for Paul Mensley, normal in these conditions, looking after his tyres. 225.1 by Paul Mensley, 224.1 by Freddie Hunt. Oh, um, was that Ben Gill's escort on the uh, on a on a low loader? It, it was certainly an escort. I thought it was Joe Gomes' car. It might have been it was a blue yeah. one, but uh, they're both blue. Yeah. And another new fastest lap to Andy Middlehurst, two twenty point one seven one. He's only six point four seconds now behind. He's really yeah. I think Gary Pearson has got uh, something not going too well with his car. I wonder the Middlehurst banged some slicks on uh, during the... or maybe has run the whole way on them, just thinking they'll come in towards the end. That, that, that could be the reason. I mean, Andy's obviously capable. He's a driver with vast experience and success, and he, he would be capable of handling it on... They didn't change tyres at his pit stop. I didn't see that. No, because we, we watched wonder whether he, he sort of wrestled it along in the early stages as it was, took it yeah. easy, and then knew they'd come to him in the end. He's a better weather forecaster than everybody else. Um, or predictor of track conditions. Well, he's not, he's not going to win, but he is possibly going to gain a couple more places. We've got eight minutes to go. But he's going to get... Uh, he's going to catch David yeah. Cuff, isn't he? Yes, he is. And uh, here he is. 
That's passing well, David Carr. He's, got a pa he's, got, he's already passed Gary Pearson. Yeah, he's passed David Carr, hasn't he? And now he's uh, chasing down Aaron Moulton Smith. That's right. He's not that far ahead. In the, uh, the show he'll, he'll catch him, no he problem. May not catch him by the end of this lap, but he'll catch him by the end of the next one. And he's got his uh, mirrors full of Ollie Bryant in the Chevrolet Camaro, the Simonized car. So he comes through seven and a half minutes on the clock still, and Andy Middlehurst in the 55 green Nissan completes a lap. Do we get another fastest lap out of him? He goes up a couple of places, he's up into fifth place now, and he is just one and a half seconds behind Aaron Melton Smith. So fourth place is, is definitely looking good. After that, I think he'll struggle. Has Mensley made time this lap? Uh, the gap, we'll see in a moment. Paul Mensley's gone through 21 laps. Where's Freddie? That's what I'm thinking. Where is Freddie? He's due and he's not come through. Has he stopped out somewhere? Had a spin? Or just not ping the timing? Well, that's another possibility. But so he... here's Mensley. Here's Mensley. And where's the blue Nissan? Well, it's not there. It's not there. And that's much more than the one and a half yeah. seconds, yeah, three and a half is. seconds it was. So he's gone. Why, we don't yet know. Hopefully we can pick him up somewhere around the circuit, but somewhere we have lost Freddie Hunt. So Steve Dance is going to go up into second eventually. And we reckon, therefore, Andy Middlehurst will be third. Yes, yeah, now really desperately seeking yes. damp bits. But he will see, I'm sure, that there is no pursuer in his mirrors. Yeah, well, Steve Dance is a minute and 15 behind. And his lap time last time round Steve Dance was? 2.29. Yeah. So he's not lapping as quickly as Mensley, even Mensley looking for uh, looking for the damp bits, the dark. Yeah, so he, he can now stroke his home. Five and a half minutes to go, but we, we, we would like to know what's happened to, to Freddie Hunt. I saw in the background the VW Golf charging past one of the questions. Oh, and uh, so he's trying part. to get past the, um, the Capri, and they went down the inside. That's Tom Shepard, isn't it? It's his two-wheel, two-wheeler Tom Shepard, as of, as of Goodwood, and he uh, saved the uh, excellent Frankie Sirocco from a huge. Andy uh, Middlehurst, another new fastest lap, a two nineteen point one three five. He's, he's third. now third. He's got ahead of of uh, Aaron Milton Smith. Uh, as expected, in fact, not just ahead, he's eight and a half seconds ahead. But he's a big, big distance behind second place Steve Dance, though, isn't he? Uh, yes, but he's lapping ten seconds a lap quicker <laughs> last time around. With time for just a, a couple more laps after this one. Yes, yeah, so he's not going to make it, but, uh, but we might get he's three on the, laps. He's on the this. podium, he's in the top three. Well, yes, yeah, Paul Mensley's, of course, pace has come, gone up. Now he doesn't need to. Uh, fight off, fend off Freddy. So, yeah, uh, Andy Middlehurst won't catch Steve Dance in the what, less of the race. But we can't answer the question. What's happened to Freddie Hunt? Gary Pearson has just done it, his car's best lap of the race, and he's closed right up on David Cuff. There's Gary Pearson, there's David Cuff so coming through Gary's Woodcombe. ahead, and they're about to be lapped by Paul Mensley. Yes. So despite, I mean, he, he's about to lap some good cars, so uh, despite his tire preservation he's uh, going to fair old pace that, taking that pretty gently isn't he now Paul Mansley he'll have been signalled by his pit I'm sure that um, he's well to the good yeah that's all that there is with the name S Soper on the side 
the number eight BMW of David Cuff. Uh, Gary Pearson doesn't want to be lapped because he'd like to have another lap to uh, see whether he can pass David Cuff. He's past David Cuff, isn't he? David Cuff, I think, is behind. Oh, uh, sorry. Hensley. So, well, the Aaron Mel sorry, the Aaron Melton Smith BMW. Then it's the other BMW. That's Chris Williams now, isn't it? Driving the uh, yes, the Rover in ninth place. That's uh, Gordy Much. How's he getting on? He's first in his class, but not leading U2TC somewhere down in that, the BMW. Another new fastest lap by, by uh, Andy Middlehurst, 218.619. Continue to lap 10 seconds quicker than anybody else on the track at the moment. Coming into Brooklands. Yeah, it could, it could be that he, your theory about him being on slick tyres. But certainly he's just going quicker and quicker and quicker and not really worried about the, the state of his tyres, is he? Nope. And he was 42 seconds behind Steve Dance last time through. It's, it's still more than he can achieve in what's left of the race, but uh, it's been a pretty impressive storm through the field by uh, and he was something like eighth or ninth when he came into the pits we don't know why his uh, fellow Jonathan is uh, the owner of the car Jonathan Bay didn't race was yes it? we do yes unfortunately uh, family illness he's oh, gone home okay so he was up for it but was unable to drive today I have no info whatsoever um, on uh, uh, Freddie Hunt. the demise of Freddie Hunt and the Nissan. Um, he didn't make it back to the pits, otherwise um, Lewis Beals would have informed us. Oh, we can see it on camera, I'm and sure. He would. But, uh, he, he's pulled off and gone behind a wall Hiding somewhere. behind a wall. Yeah. Right, half a minute remains. Our leader will go through for one more lap, I think, won't he? Another new fastest lap by Andy Middlehurst to 16.956. The gap is down to less than half a minute for Steve Dance. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Paul Menzies is going to time it perfectly. He comes out of club corner now and will be greeted, or should be greeted, by the chequered flag. There it is. So almost spot on one hour of racing. Paul Mensley, well pleased with that. A, a very good effort that all the way through. Paul Mensley had to fend was, off, uh, and that was Gary Pearson, I think, wasn't it? Who was unlapping himself as they crossed the, as he crossed the line? Yes, because yeah. he, he wants to go yeah. on and do another lap uh, to uh, try and get ahead of the David Cuff BMW. So there's your winner, then uh, excellent performance. Had to fend off Simon Garrett in the early stages. Started alongside. The car, which was looking as though it could catch him before the end, Freddie Hunt, but something's gone wrong somewhere. There is the Ford Capri of, first of all, Guy Smith, now Peter Smith, taking the flag, finishing in 12th place and second of the Tony John Trophy, Class C. Morrison Shepherd back as well now with the uh, little Golf. They are great looking cars, there's BMW 635 CSI. Yeah. used to uh, be very effective in the European Touring Car Championship. And David Dickinson coming through. Now, David is going to win the U2TC category, finishing in 15th place overall. Steve Dance has just got home in the interim. Second place overall for the X-Short Oval Racer with the number 16, the Weisberg livery tribute Capri. And here, yeah. after a great drive, Andy Middlehurst in Jonathan Bailey's uh, Nissan Skyline. And in fact, on the last lap, he didn't set another new lap, uh, fastest lap of the race. But how far was he behind at the flag? 15.041 seconds. Two more laps, he'd have done it. 
because he was lapping 10 seconds quicker than the car he was chasing. Yeah, very impressive from Middlehurst. There's the uh, it was a, it was a Patrick Motors Rover. Formula Ford racer in the early 80s, wasn't he, Andy Middlehurst? Yeah, the Pacer. Remember he, that? He Pacer. did. Howard the Bruce. Bruce Pacer. Yes. And still they are coming through. There is the Rover number four of the Williamses. Chris Williams driving it at the second half of the race. And as they come up to the flag, Aaron Moulton Smith doing enough to keep Gary Pearson behind him. The gap between them at the flag, 4.6 seconds, in fact. So Gary's efforts in vain. So what's the uh, post-race arrangement, Marcus? Well, we've got uh, three podiums coming up, and uh, this is our overall winner coming in. Great drive from uh, Paul Mensley in the 22 Netcom car, running in the colours of uh, Murray Carter from the uh, Antipodes, and Murray Carter's name also graces the window in a sort of... Uh, um, Bathurst-style window strip he's got, uh, Carter and Mensley. It never were a period combination. Because no. uh, Murray Carter's very elderly these days. Great racer. Well, the schedule envisages that the lunch break starting late uh, will then be followed by the MRL RAC Palmar Cup, the three-hour race, starting at 13.50, finishing three hours later when it gets dark. There are the results then. Now the 13.20. Yes, quite. Uh, the winner, Paul Mensley, number 22, Ford Sierra Cosworth, second, number 60, Steve Darts, Ford Capri, third, Andy Middlehurst, number 55 of the Nissan Skyline, fourth, uh, number 19, Mark Smith and Aaron Moulton Smith, BMW E30 M3. Seven, uh, fifth, number seven, Gary Pearson's Ford Capri RS 3100. Uh, eighth, sorry, sixth, number eight, Darren Fielding and David Cuffs, BMW E30 M3. Uh, seventh, number 221, is the BMW 65 uh, of Tristan Judge. In eighth place, Sorry, in seventh place is Judge. In uh, eighth place, Ben Gills, despite his spins, doing well to finish in eighth place. Ford Escort RS 1600 of Ben Gill. In ninth place, Charlie and Chris Williams is Rover SD1, number four. In tenth place, number 52, the Rover SD1 of Robert Oldershaw. In eleventh place, number 21, Graham and Ollie Bryant's Chevrolet Camaro. In ninth place, another father and son combination, Guy Smith with his father, Peter Smith, Ford Capri. In thirteenth place, uh, the number 44 Volkswagen Golf of Jim Morris and Tom Shepard. In 14th place, number 144, David Dickinson winning the U2TC category in his Lotus Cortina. Uh, in 15th place, number 3, Richard Dutton's Lotus Cortina. In 16th place, number 123, classi well, classified 16th it seems, although disappearing before the end, Rick Wood and Freddie Hunt's Nissan Skyline. In 17th place, number 341, Sean Balfe uh, and Tom Ashton's Lotus Cortina. In that's as far as we can go because we are going to go I imagine now to the podiums and interviews with the drivers Lewis no we've been uh, jumping the gun there but uh, we will be going there shortly uh, and as I was saying we're going to have the three hour race starting at 10 minutes to two uh, and so it's be a short lunch break grab a sandwich quickly uh, and we'll be back but before then We'll have the drivers interviewed by Louis Beals down in the pit lane, where things are nice and sunny and dry, I think, now for Lewis. There's a view of the BRC clubhouse looking across Luffield Corner with the iconic badge and flag flying over the clubhouse. It's not been open today, I don't think, because, of course, everything's based around the wing this weekend, except where we are.
Well, it's a good, another another good race. In fact, all the races, Marcus, have been entertaining. I know that the GT Forties only had seven starters, but even they had a, gave us plenty to talk about. Very much so. We've had an exceptional weekend of racing so far, and uh, if last year's uh, uh, three-hour race, the Palmar Cup, was anything to go by, then uh, the one we're about to see uh, is going to finish the weekend in some style. Indeed. So, just uh, getting the drivers together of course we've got two drivers one isn't with the car when they come into the park ferme area but needs to be retrieved from the paddock so making their way to the podium here we come duncan wiltshire man behind mrl motor racing legends looking at his watch to see where are we uh, Time moves on. There's uh, Andy Middlehurst on the right. Yeah, and the Lord of the Dance in the middle. <laughs> Steve Dance and with, with the winner, young, young crew with him. Paul Mensley being congratulated by Duncan Wiltshire. I think we are. We've got all the drivers lined okay, up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to do the uh, three podiums for the historic touring car challenge. First up, we're going to look for. We're going to do the historic podium, and in uh, third place was uh, an absolute storm and drive from Andy Middlehurst. We like to take the uh, third place step. Third place for Andy. Storm and drive there into third. Many congratulations. Trophies being presented by Harry Whale of Silverstone Auctions. Second position, Steve Dance. Come along, Steve. Absolutely great uh, run there in the Capri. And uh, top of the step and first of overall, Paul Mainsley in an absolutely superbly driven Ford Sierra Cosworth. Paul a bit quicker on track and he is on there. There you go. Uh, We'll just go in and have a quick word with Paul. Step down if you like, Paul, because I'm yeah, a bit taller than me. That's all right. <laughs> hey, it's absolutely wonderful drive. Thank you very much. Uh, I was getting a bit worried towards the end. I could see Hunt coming, and then uh, obviously something happened about three laps from the end. I don't know what happened to him, but just managed to keep the lead and hold it. But uh, got away at the start and uh, tried to hold it some distance ahead, and just trying to keep the tyres cold, and uh, which is quite hard work to say the least. I was trying to hug the ball. Uh, yeah, do you know where Freddie went or stopped? If I'm honest with you, I don't. I, I could see him in my rear view mirror, sort of two, three laps on the end, and he was closing. I could see the gap on the pit board coming down. I was thinking, oh my goodness. And then uh, suddenly he wasn't behind me, and I thought, fantastic, just got to keep it on the on the black stuff and keep going until the end. And that was it. So. Yeah, many congratulations on that victory. Very much indeed. Most appreciate it. Okay, so there we go. We're now going to do the uh, Tony Dron podium. We'll start off with uh, third position, Peter and Guy Smith. Come along, Peter and Guy. Oh, oh, just you. Which one are you? Yeah. I'm the younger one. Oh. You're not telling me. <laughs> Guy. I'm Peter. Oh, you're Peter. Peter, third. Thank you very if you'll take the third yeah. step. And again, we've got Harry Whale from Silverstone Auctions giving the uh, trophies away. So uh, just Peter in there. Okay, second position. Absolutely fabulously driven. Uh, Camero, uh, uh, Ollie. And uh, Graham Bryan, absolutely stunning driven uh, Camaro, back of the days. But our uh, race winner in the Tony Drawn section is Robert Oldershaw. Come along, Robert. Many congratulations to Robert. In the Rover. And oh, well, there it is. Come on down, have a quick, have a quick chat. Step down there, Robert. Ah. Superbly driven rover. Thank you. Yeah, it was a fairly lonely race actually after the first um, first lap. Um, yeah, nice and nice and uh, you know controlled and uh, car was fantastic and uh, yeah, f fairly lonely really. I take it's one of the more modern cars in that series in the uh, Tony Drone section. Um, I don't know to be honest. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you just drive it. Eighty-one. I just drive the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, superbly well done. And uh, yeah, is it is it the original car? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Sylvain the day. Neil McGrath, I think, was one of the drivers, wasn't he? Uh, it yeah. was, um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> well done, congratulations, ladies. Congratulations on that. There you go. The winner of that's Robert Oldshaw, winner of the Tony John section. Now we've got the under two litre touring cars. And uh, there we go. Third place went to Sean Balfe and Tom Ashton. Here we go, the uh, third place to Sean and Tom, again receiving their trophies from uh, Harry Wales Silverstone's auctions. Second place is Richard Dutton, our uh, Fortec motorsport man, who just told me it's a lot more fun driving than team manager. And our race winner on the under two litre category is David Dickerson. Well done, David. And David receives his uh, trophy. We'll just have a quick chat. Right, there you go. One, two, three. Come down here, David. I'm, I'm, I'm not tall enough to get up there until I... David, congratulations. Absolutely great victory. Yeah, it was, it was... At the start, I went off at the second corner, and I think I just... Richard went off as well. I thought I'd thrown it away. Well, if, yeah. you, went around, if you went around up, no one would have known. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And then I just got my head down and pulled the gap and... It was actually a bit boring in the end, but it was a bit kind of I was waiting to thought maybe in the pit stops after the pit stops, but I uh, just kind of nursed the car home, just making sure. What were conditions like? Because we, because that your cars are the older cars. Yeah. Mm, tricky. At the start, really fun because I, it, there's so much fun in the wet. But then as it dried up and the tires were kind of gone off, it just went under there, so it wasn't as much fun. But at the start of the race, it was there's so much fun in the wet because you're just sideways everywhere. So. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, Great that you had a victory and uh, well done, congratulations, hope to see you back again. Cheers, yeah, I'll definitely be back next year. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, guys. So that's the end of it and that's the uh, three uh, podiums that uh, we've had to do for the Historic Touring Car Challenge now. Short break for lunch before we... Okay.